Hi, my name is Tom Bultrees, and I'm a professor in the Pore Scale Processes and Geomaterials Group at Ghent University's Department of Geology. Together with my colleague, Professor Vera Knudde, I investigate the science of porous rocks and sediments. As we will discuss further in this video, porous geological materials are used in a wide range of applications. Porous rocks and sediments contain groundwater in the subsurface, which is a very important source of, for example, drinking water, and similar rock layers deep below the earth can be used to store hydrogen gas. Rocks are also used as building materials. And what all these applications have in common is that they ultimately depend on processes that take place inside a network of tiny pores in the material. And it is these processes that we study. They include fluid flow, chemical reactions, salt and ice crystallization in the pores, fracturing, and microbial processes. And very often these processes are coupled and influence each other. So we study complex behaviors in complex materials. And this is why we are so closely involved with the UGCT core facility. MicroCT is the perfect tool to study the role of the 3D microstructure of the materials, and going a step further, to visualize dynamic processes while they are taking place. To do this, we collaborate with the other groups in UGCT to come up with new MicroCT methods and to apply them in novel experiments. We will present some experiments that serve as illustrations for this. Let's start with groundwater flow, where complex fluid dynamics take place. We recently developed a method to visualize such fluid flows in porous materials in 3D by making many fast micro-CT scans to track small tracer particles in the flow. By determining each particle's flow path, we can calculate 3D flow velocities inside the material and how this changes over time. We are now developing this technique further in my ERC starting grant flowscopy. This is really important to improve our models of how pollutants spread in the ground and how we best clean them up. Another example of fluid flow in porous materials is underground hydrogen storage. Here, the idea is to produce hydrogen when renewable energy is cheap, for example, when the sun shines, and then store it for later use in a porous rock layer more than a thousand meters deep underground. This rock holds the hydrogen in its pores, like a sponge. Now, to use this method, we have to understand how the hydrogen will fill the pores that are initially filled with saline groundwater. To study such fluid movements, we use fast micro-CT imaging to make 3D movies, here of this fluid in red being pushed out by water. We do this both in the lab at UGCT, as at synchrotrons such as the Swiss light source shown in this video. To make this as realistic as possible, we have special flow cells in which we can recreate the high pressures and temperatures that we find this deep below the ground, while we image the groundwater and hydrogen injection. This is a good example of the elaborate setups that we often build around our micro-CT instruments to precisely control the sample conditions. We also use this setup to study the chemical and microbial processes that can be triggered by this fluid flow. Hello, I'm Vele Knudde, and one of the topics I work on is building materials. Building materials, such as sedimentary stone, mortars and concrete, are all susceptible for weathering. Most of the times, weathering is a combination of physical, chemical and biological processes, and it has an important impact on our building infrastructure and cultural heritage. Besides that, weathering can also affect subsurface stability, it can affect aquifer and reservoir rock permeability, and it can alter CO2 and energy storage in our underground. Weathering behavior of building materials is often evaluated using standard characterization techniques and accelerated weathering tests. So typically researchers first examine the quarries, outcrops or buildings macroscopically, then they take a selection of samples to examine them further in the lab. And there they typically perform characterization tests, they test the performance in use and they examine the durability. And they do this by executing accelerated weathering tests. 
Even though these tests provide valuable information, we often miss the fundamental understanding of the poor scale processes in order to explain and even predict macro scale or field scale behavior. And this is where X-ray CT provides the tools to provide us the missing information. We study how entire stones weather, but also how single grains weather in function of time. Like here, this olivine grain, which is placed in a liquid with a low pH and was systematically scanned. Without physically cutting the minerals, we can even study the dissolution of the internal features in function of time. And we can determine how much and in what way superficial material has been dissolved. This information is important if we want to model enhanced mineral weathering to actively reduce CO2 in the atmosphere. But X-ray CT also allows us to study the use of recycled materials or circular building blocks and how these materials behave in function of time. These are often very complex materials, as you can see here. We also study the 3D structural and chemical characterization of valuable raw materials. This is why we contribute to mineral processing, urban mining and the recovery of valuable raw materials from industrial residues and landfill mining. To do so, we correlate data coming from different techniques such as X-ray CT, hyperspectral CT, X-ray fluorescence and scanning electron microscopy information. And for example, we work on methods to identify different minerals in critical ores like illustrated here. To conclude, I want to highlight that MicroCT makes complex material behavior visible. Advanced lab-based MicroCT fills the gap in porous media studies and at Ghent University, we have the expertise in fast X-ray imaging, submicron imaging and the determination of 3D chemical composition using lab-based CT systems. We apply our knowledge to contribute to a greener world by studying material processes important for groundwater, clean energy, sustainable buildings and many more. I sincerely want to thank all past and present PROGRESS team members because together we have made important progress in geological research. Thank you very much for your attention.